let's see about septic abortion in our previous videos we have seen about abortion its introduction causes of abortion and different types of abortion like inevitable and incomplete abortion complete abortion and threatened abortion now in this video we'll be seeing about one of the types of abortion that is septic abortion first what is septic abortion septic abortion is an infected abortion which is characterized by fever endometritis that is inflammation of the uterine endometrium and parametritis inflammation of the uterine parametrium so this septic abortion is nothing but an infected abortion which is complicated by fever endometritis and parametritis and this infection usually begins as endometritis so it begins from the endometrium and it also involves the related products of conception if it is left untreated then the infection spreads further into the myometrium and the perimetrium also it extends into parametrium if it is still left untreated then it may turn into a very dangerous condition that is peritonitis so this is the pathophysiology of septic abortion and the infection begins from the endometrium and it also involves the products of conception if it is left untreated the infection spreads to the myometrium perimetrium and the parametrium and it can lead to a dreaded complication that is peritonitis the causes of septic abortion it results from unsafe or illegal abortions which are done by non medical professionals the etiology is polymicrobial there are many microorganisms which cause infections most common being gram positive and gram negative obligate that is strict aerobes so the most common organisms are gram positive and gram negative strict anaerobes clostridium perfringens is also said to be one of the cause for septic abortion coming to the clinical features the patient usually presents with fever associated with chills and rigor abdominal pain vaginal discharge bleeding per vaginum and the female also has a history of recent pregnancy the clinical features are fever associated with chills and rigor because of sepsis also there is abdominal pain vaginal discharge bleeding per vaginum and history of recent pregnancy will be definitely present next what are the characteristics of disseminated sepsis that is when the infection has spread beyond the uterus through the blood into various organs so the features of disseminated sepsis include high fever then there will be tachycardia 
increased heart rate, tachypnea, increased respiratory rate and also there will be respiratory difficulty that is dyspnea. Also it manifests as hypotension that is low blood pressure and there can be evidence of peritonitis. All these are signs of sepsis. So now what is the management? The management includes both investigations and treatment. First coming to the investigation. Investigation, the basic investigations we do include routine blood investigations and urine investigations. In addition, we do blood culture, urine culture, and high vaginal swab is taken. It is also cultured to detect the organism causing the sepsis, and based on that we give specific antibiotic treatment. Until the results arrive, we give broad spectrum antibiotics intravenously started immediately. Now coming to the treatment, first for resuscitation two large bore IV lines are started with NS or RL, normal serine or ringal lactate. Next we give oxygen as and when required and then we start on IV antibiotics until the culture report arrives we give prophylactic broad spectrum antibiotics intravenous. So, we give ampicillin combined with gentamicin which is changed to specific antibiotics after the culture report arrives. This is a broad spectrum antibiotic. Next we also transfuse blood and blood components if required. Then we confirm by ultrasound examination which reveals the presence or absence of the products of conception. If in case if perforation of bubble suspected x-ray abdomen erect view can be taken for confirmation of bowel perforation. So, the primary aim in treatment is to remove the focus of sepsis This is the primary aim of treatment. If there are retained products of conception in ultrasound examination, then we evacuate the products of conception 
by either manual vacuum aspiration or we perform dilatation and curettage DNC. If there is perforation of bubble, or there is perforation or rupture of uterus, then laparotomy is done under antibiotic cover. In some cases, hysterectomy may be needed. In some cases of septic abortion. So, in order to avoid all this, there is primary prevention. As we always say, prevention is better than cure. So, we should prevent this from occurring. So, the pre primary prevention of septic abortion includes access to effective and acceptable contraception preventing unwanted pregnancies access to safe and legal abortion in case of contraceptive failure So, these are the primary prevention. Lastly, coming to the differential diagnosis of septic abortion, what are all the conditions which mimic septic abortion? So, the differential diagnosis include acute appendicitis. ruptured ectopic pregnancy, ovarian tumors particularly the twisted ovarian tumors, pelvic inflammatory disease and any other cases of shock, non obstetric causes of shock. These are all the differential diagnosis of septic abortion and that is all about septic abortion and overall that is all about the entire topic of abortion. Thank you.